This poem was written in 1902, which is the same time as the Second Boer War, a war that Thomas Hardy felt very strongly against because it was a war about defending the British Empire. Like many at the time, Hardy was very much against this. The returning British soldier who's speaking in the poem doesn't seem to have any idea actually what he was fighting for and that's important. But we'll look more closely at the poem in a few seconds. Let's first hear a reading of it. The Man He Killed by Thomas Hardy Had he and I but met by some old ancient inn We should have set us down to wet right many a nipperkin But ranged as infantry And staring face to face I shot at him as he at me and killed him in his place. I shot him dead because, because he was my foe. Just so, my foe of course he was, that's clear enough. Although he thought he'd list perhaps offhand like just as I, was out of work, had sold his traps, no other reason why. Yes, quaint and curious war is, you shoot a fellow down, you treat, if met where any bar is, or help to half a crown. Looking firstly at structure and form, it's clear from the speech marks that this is a dramatic monologue. One character is talking to another. The character is a soldier who's returned from war, and I've already said that it's very likely to be the Boer War since that was going on at the time that this poem was written. Here's the first stanza, four lines long, so we can refer to that as a quatrain, a stanza of four lines. This poem consists of five quatrains. There's also a regular rhyme scheme. If you look at the first stanza here, we've got met and wet rhyming and in and kin, so therefore it's an AB, AB rhyme scheme. And finally, in terms of form, we've got a strong pulsing rhythm, an iambic rhythm of unstressed, stressed syllables. De dum, de dum, de dum. Um, you'll see at a glance that the third line is longer, so in that line we have four stressed syllables, whereas in all of the others there are three. So if you'd like to take a note maybe of those key terms, here they are, quatrain, Stanza of four lines, an iambic rhythm pulses all the way through the poem. If you want to get really technical, you can describe the three beat line as iambic trimeter and the single line of four beats iambic tetrameter. And AB, AB is the rhyme scheme. In terms of the structure of events in this poem, it's very straightforward. We have a soldier talking about killing his enemy at the start of the poem. He very quickly questions why he did this. He reflects on what he and this supposed enemy soldier must have had in common. And he ends by reflecting on the insanity of war. It's important to note as well that this is a working class soldier. We're not talking about officer class here. We know this from his use of language. So he talks um, about a nipperkin, which is dialect for a measure of drink. He says, sat us down and offhand like, and these are clearly dialectal phrases, actually from the West Country, where Thomas Hardy lived. So it's the voice of an ordinary working class man. He expresses no awareness of the political situation. He doesn't know why he was fighting the Boers. He's just thinking about what he probably had in common with the man that he killed and wondering what it was all about. He's just referred to, of course, as he in the title of the poem, the man he killed. The victim doesn't have an identity either, he's just the man. So what Hardy's doing here is taking these two individuals to represent a whole class, the working class. The strong implication of the poem is that these people are simply the cannon fodder of a ruling class.
There are no similes or metaphors in this poem. The language is straightforward for reasons we've looked at. The opening stanza evokes the image of an ancient inn and the warmth and cosiness of that traditional British setting obviously contrasts with the reality of the shooting which the next stanza takes us to. Adding to the warmth of the scene is the idea of the speaker sitting down with this man that he's talking about, the man that he met, and sharing a drink, a nipperkin. This creates a sense of brotherhood which is important to the meaning of the poem. The next stanza takes us to the battlefield, but ranged as infantry and staring face to face. That's an image that reminds us what warfare was like during these times. You would actually have to look your enemy in the face to kill him. And that's clearly, and increasingly as the poem goes on, something that the soldier struggles with. Repetition is important in this stanza and it's used to create a sense of the speaker trying to convince himself and his listener that he had to do what he did, he had to kill his enemy. So he uses the word because, but he repeats it because he can't think of a reason the first time he says it. Clearly it's not at all obvious to him why he killed the man. He does finally come up with the idea of the man being his foe and to convince himself again he repeats the word my foe of course he was but he's too honest to allow himself that easy get out that easy justification for what he did we know this because the stanza ends with the word although so again he's faltering he knows that actually this isn't simple notice too the use of enjambment that word although is the start of an idea and the idea is continued in the next quatrain so it's broken right in the middle that break in an odd place is used to create a sense of the speaker really struggling to express himself coherently because these ideas that he's grappling with are so huge and so difficult and in the end there isn't an explanation for what he did it was senseless because war itself is senseless. This is a really strong protest poem. In this stanza, the speaker imagines a life for the man that he killed, and he imagines a life that wasn't much different from his own. He guesses that this other man enlisted for the same reason that he did, because he was out of work and needed a job, which is why he sold all his traps, meaning personal possessions. So the speaker feels a bond, a brotherhood, as I said earlier, with the man that he killed. They're both working men trying to make an honest crust, basically. There was no great moral purpose for signing up. They didn't know what the war was about. In fact, the speaker uses the phrase offhand-like to make this point that he signed up without giving it very much thought at all. He signed up in an offhand kind of a way just thought it would be a good idea, being out of work and needing money. So it was totally bizarre, the speaker concludes, that he would kill somebody just like him. And he uses the words quaint and curious to try to express that thought. We do get the impression that the speaker isn't a man of words. And so these words seem curiously inadequate, really. The poem ends with the same idea that it begins with, that if these two had met in a different situation, they wouldn't have been shooting each other, but sharing a drink. Notice the friendly use of the word fellow as well. What Hard is doing is preventing us from dehumanising the enemy. He's emphasising the enemy's humanity, his ordinariness, the fact that he hasn't done anything to deserve to die. So we've seen that there's a strong anti-war message in this poem and that's its main theme. The reasons given for killing the man are weak. He was a foe. That's the only justification for it that the speaker can find, but he doesn't know why he was a foe. That highlights the stupidity of war, that men kill each other just because they're ordered to. And that relates to another theme which Hardy touches on, which is the exploitation of the working class. We know that these men who were foes 
had more in common with each other than they did with their leaders. The speaker speculates that they both signed up because they were out of work. This idea of hardship is also suggested by his reference to lending the man he killed half a crown at the end of the poem. So he knows what it's like to go without and that's why he signed up, that's why he assumed his enemy signed up. Uh, but the point Hardy is making in this poem is that it's these men and men like them that end up on the front line risking their lives whilst those who recruit them are somewhere else rather safer. There's a real unfairness about that and it's very much tied up in this idea of social class and inequality.